from readers and viewers alike. Oh, outstanding. Well, Kimberly, thank you for being with us tonight. I'm having fun. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, we're going to have fun, too. And, and, and um, your book is Get Love. It's the number one book in the Get series, and it's, it's um, How to Transform Your Love Life. I have to tell you, we've never done a show like this. Uh, Victor and I have been doing Second Sight for three years. Victor River and I have been doing this show, The Paranormal Lounge, I guess, for what, six months now? About seven, like that? About seven months, yeah. Uh, about seven months. And we've never done a show like this. I mean, we're always talking about demons and ghosts and, and you know, afterlife and, you know, all metaphysical stuff. And here we're talking about love, and I'm excited about this. A um, little bit of a different spin on our show tonight. So, River, how about you start start off with the first question? I would love to. What makes Get Love different than all the other relationship books out there, please, Kimberly? I think it's a lot like your show. I'm absolutely real in that book. The first half of the book are love letters. None were edited. Nothing was left out. And it's so that I could give the world with a journey into love. Two healthy people from hello, how we fell on our faces, how we got back up, how we dealt with our fear, how we dealt with love. And I really think that it's time that those of us who have the privilege to allow people to share our lives, we must walk the walk. And what I do, people need to be vulnerable. They need to be authentic or I can't help. So what right do I have to do any mentoring, any sharing, if I don't do that as well? And then the second half of the book takes a big leap, something that isn't spoken about much. Everyone tells you to change your beliefs or your life's going to suck, but they don't tell you how. And I hate it when people tell me there's something wrong, but they won't tell me how to fix it. So in the second half of the book, We look at your beliefs around love, and I show you exactly how to change them so you can handcraft your life. All right. Sounds sounds good. Sounds good. Um, I I actually just got the book the other day, and I didn't get a chance to to get through it, but I started it. Um, So when I finish this book, I'm actually going to be giving it away to one of our listeners. So in the second half of the show, maybe we'll do a little contest, and whoever – you know, wins the contest, we'll we'll get the book. Um, I'll take the next question. Uh, The core of Get Love is a very personal experience of yours. Why did you choose to to share such a vulnerable and personal personal life event in such a public way? Because the root of love is vulnerability, and the root of intimacy is vulnerability, and how dare I teach about it without role modeling it. Okay. Vic? Kimberly, you say nothing changes until you do. What do you mean by this? When we talk about relationships of any kind, we always want the other person to change. I mean, change how you talk to me. Change, stay home and be with me. I don't want to go and watch sports. I don't want to come home and find out that you're saying I'm not enough again. It's always someone else we want to look to but we can't change anyone except for ourselves and so if you want a different kind of relationship if you want a different kind of life then change yourself and then the question is how and how is you walk the four steps in the second half of get love and literally you will reprogram yourself and you can change and of course loving someone else or finding love with someone else always starts with finding love within. Always. Always, Victor. It, don't even go look for a romantic relationship if you haven't fallen in love with yourself. You know, you, you, you mentioned about, you know, ch- you know, you can't change somebody. And I live that, you know, and, and Victor knows firsthand what I went through, you know, in my, my last relationship. I was in a three-year relationship with, with just not a good person. And I knew she wasn't a good person from – the first time I kissed her, believe it or not, and I stayed. And I stayed because I thought I could change her. And I thought that because of who I am and what I do, and I help so many people, that maybe I could just show her a different way. And you know what? It just, it just never happened. And I feel like 
by trying to change her, I changed. Instead of me changing her, I wound up changing myself. I started, I, I think it made me a worse person, believe it or not. I don't, I don't know if that's, if that's possible, how it, you know, if it could work that way. But in my eyes, that's, that's exactly what it did. By trying to make her a better person, I forgot who I was. And it wasn't only until the end when I said, you know what, screw this. You know, I like, I like who I used to be. And when I started loving myself again, you know, realizing that I'm allowed to be happy, that's when, you know, things started changing for me. So I just wanted to throw that out there. River, you had a follow-up? Yeah, we started talking about changing other people, and I, uh, I'm i the love expert or relationship expert. I've had a lot of uh, relationships in my life. And uh, I've, I've, I know what love is at this point. I'm confident in that. And I just think that um, so many people approach a relationship in that manner and or perfection. They're looking for either perfection uh, that, that doesn't need to uh, have, you know, can't, nothing can be flawed or, or be tainted in any way. And, and I think uh, it's just really interesting to me um, how many people will attempt that when they're looking for love? Why do we have to fight so hard to make it work? You know, why can't it just be natural and be a little um, to do that? And I, I, I do think Kimberly's right. I think you got to get vulnerable to do that and be willing to let things happen and unfold. And so um, <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see where this interview goes. I, I'm, I'm surprised at the topic this evening on the Paranormal Lounge. Uh, well, you know, listen, I like to throw curveballs every now and then. I see that. Let me tell you something. Um, I, I did a big psychic party uh, last Saturday where I read like 12 women, and it was a great party. And I met a woman named Susan Corso, and she comes from a very uh, mafiosa background, okay? And she wrote three really amazing books, and they have nothing to do with the paranormal except that she found spirituality, okay? She's going to be a guest of ours next month sometime, and it has really nothing to do with paranormal. I just have... I like to throw a little curveball every now and then, guys. You know, I, I think it livens things up. I think it keeps things fresh. And it, it shows people that, you know what, we don't have to just talk paranormal and demons and stuff like that all the time, you know? So that, that's why I did it. Um, River, why don't you take the next question? I would love to. I would love to. Uh, what do you say to those who claim to be too busy to change themselves to get love, Kimberly? Uh, guys, I think we may have an issue with her call because I'm getting a pop-up saying there's an issue with the call. They're trying to get her back. Okay. So uh, let's hang on for one minute. Well, while we're trying to get her back, um, you know, I, I wrote in, in, in the chat room that, uh, that I love some me time. And what I find is, you know, I really like myself. Is that is that so bad? No. Not at all. Chris, Chris, the question is, how often do you like yourself? <laughs> at, least, at least once a day, twice on the weekend. But, you know, that's, you that's all another story. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, I'm well, going to try and drop her call and bring her back because uh, the Skype is not working properly. Okay. Apparently. So what we're going to do is I'm going to disconnect her. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. She may be back. We have people in the chat room talking about changing batteries and... Buzz and you know, while, while we're waiting for Kimberly to come back, there's a story about this woman who walks into a pharmacy and she walks up to the pharmacist and says, Please tell me where your batteries are. And he uses his finger in motion and she, he says, Come this way. She said, If I could come this way, I wouldn't need the batteries. <laughs> well, I got one for you. The other day, I went into Walmart, I had to go pick up some stuff, and there was a guy in front of me trying to uh, buy condoms, right? And he had a Visa card and and it wouldn't go through, and it was the first time I ever saw somebody get cock blocked by Visa. Go figure. Oh, <laughs> God. Okay. Was that bad? That was bad. Anybody? All right. I, I, we're not connect- Kimberly, are you back? No, we're not connecting with her. Well, I do have a phone number for her. If you give me a minute, I'll get it. Well, I think I'm, I'm calling her on her phone number. I think that's what happened. Oh, okay. Well, uh, technical difficulties. That, that's not a well, – Abena is telling me that that was bad. I don't think that was so bad. Uh, you know, Chris, do me a favor. Give me that number. I'm going to try calling her. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to look it up on my... Um... Yeah, and you have, to, you have to put it through the message block. You don't want to announce it on the air. Yeah. River. Well, River, River's running off while I wanted her to uh, tell a story, but um, you're going to have to take up to me while I, while I look for this number. Take care. Yep. 
Kimberly, you back? Sorry. Okay. I, I never left. You just couldn't hear me. Okay. Well, oh. you're back now. Oh, no. So she heard those horrible, that horrible joke I just said? Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Good. Go ahead, River. Ask the question again. All right, Kimberly. Uh, what do you say to those who claim to be too busy to change themselves to get love? That they're not ready for love in their life, and then I move on. I learned a long time ago not to talk to walls. There's so many people out there that are lonely. There's a pandemic of loneliness. So I want to help those who really want it. Okay. I, you know, sometimes I feel like I need help. What do you guys think? You think it's a mental thing with me? You no, I don't think it's a mental thing with you. We're going to be psychic tonight. You know what I think? Kimberly, I'm sorry. Can you hear me, Chris? You broke up. We lost Chris? you there. Yeah, yeah. We can hear you, can you now. Hear me? We can hear you now. Yeah, we, we can hear you, hear you now. Yes, we hear you now. Oh, good. Okay, Chris, what I said was that, no, there's nothing mental with you. Your heart is just so big, and you you haven't recovered from your three-year relationship. You have more tears to cry and some and some real belief that you can love flat out and be safe. You know, I agree with that, but I don't think it's the last relationship that that has me messed up. I think it's it's the marriage that I left because uh-huh. you know that was that was a good thing and, and that I screwed up, and then I got into a bad thing that was just horrible. I I think the tears are from screwing up something that was really good and going into something that was bad, but now I'm into something good again. So I so I I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're right. Victor, you want to take the next question? And I do have a huge heart. You, he has a huge heart. He has a, a heart of gold. And uh, I, I hope that uh, the relationship he is now in becomes the fulfilling and, and wonderful relationship that it can, it can be. Kimberly, your book offers a four-step process to facilitate the change within. Please share with our listeners briefly what are those processes. Oh, I think we lost her again. Oh, man, what's going on tonight? I'm not going to say no more dirty jokes, though, because I, I got thrown yeah. out there. Let me, let me try calling her again. Kimberly, you back? She was calling from her cell phone, I believe she said, and uh, she's driving or she was on the highway, so it's very possible she's going in and out of cell zones. Could be. So, River, how about you tell us, how did you find love? while we're waiting to get Kimberly back? Well, first and foremost, I didn't change at all. I was just me. And uh, love found me that way. And I'm I'm a believer that we shouldn't have to change for love, you know? Um, It it took a long time. Uh, I've, I've known love at different times in my life, and everybody loves in their own way, you know? So that's kind of a that's a big question because uh, for the different relationships that I've had, everybody had their own perception of what love is. And for some people, I mean, it's real when it's real and it's not when it's not. And I guess I've just kind of learned over the years that nobody's perfect and you've got to be willing to kind of know what you want and what you will or won't put up with. To me, somebody who's got a great sense of humor is very important. That is more important than somebody that folds the towels correctly, you know, uh, pet peeves and things. like. There's so many things that get into the way of love and relationships. I like things, and Chris, don't go south on me, but you know how I speak and how I am. I like things raw. I like it unchanged. I like primal. I like a man-man. I don't want somebody I got to mold, somebody I got to change. I want it to just work. And if it doesn't just work, then it's not for me. And I don't want to have to change for anybody either. So I don't know where Kimberly's going with this yet, and I'm kind of wondering to see as, you know, the interview unfolds. But for me, that that's love, you know. Well, I just want to say, I just want to, want to say if I went south, um, you'd be singing soprano now. Um, <laughs> my my – <laughs> my 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 question is this. <laughs> my question is this. Um, and Victor, I would like you to get involved in this too because you got a lot of wisdom. Victor's just shaking his head. He's like, "What the hell did Chris just say?" But um, my I want to know is why do people 
why do people uh, think that they're in love 